Howdy champs, my name is Mohidan People. Today I'm going to talk about the uh, new transitions panel in Adobe Dreamweaver CS6. In fact, let me straight away start off with the browser preview in Google Chrome. Right. Now I have six images out here of the different browsers and notice how they act or behave when I hover over these th uh, six different images. You can actually see they zoom out basically come into your face you can see the box shadow right the opacity uh, is regained to the original opacity which is one uh, out here origin you know uh, when you don't hover I mean in the normal state it's actually at 0.5 the size uh, width and height actually grows up from 100 px width and height actually uh, goes up to the original size of the, the the image which is 256 by 256 width and height right so uh, three or four properties are undergoing transitions and I've used the new CSS3 transitions panel also called the uh, CS, uh, the CSS transitions panel right but I've used a lot of uh, CSS3 properties out here including the uh, box shadow right and uh, trust me people this is super easy to create you can do it really quickly okay in fact uh, it'll be a great idea if I show you everything from scratch so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna delete the whole style tag with the type attribute I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna scrap it all the styles are coming from here okay including the opening and the closing style tags I've actually deleted it so what's left in uh, this document okay uh, is the uh, six different images in their original size let me show you a browser preview now okay so these are the six images in their original size okay and uh, let's now show you how I got on to uh, creating that image gallery that you saw uh, moments ago okay so uh, I'm gonna start off by creating a new CSS rule by clicking on this plus button in Dreamweaver CS6 alright next people what I'm uh, gonna do is I'm gonna target uh, IMGs all images okay now if in case you don't want to target all the images uh, you can use attribute selectors you can use classes or IDs or whatever but in our case in our example uh, I just have six images on your web page you may have many in which case you might want to target a class rather than the image tag okay but to keep things simple I'm targeting all images uh, and I would want my rule definition to be in-house internal or embedded so this document only let me say okay right let me drop down the size of the images to 100 px each that's gonna you know it's gonna act like the thumbnails now the smaller images and yep at the same time people I'm gonna set the uh, position property to relative because I'll be using Z index at one point of time <coughs> I, I can't keep it static if I wish to do that and I'm gonna say okay right notice that the images were actually shrunk from the original 256 each with an height 200 each with an height all right you can see image 100 width 100 height position relative all right I'm gonna add the opacity property to again people opacity is a CSS3 property so may not work in older uh, browsers especially IE browsers okay I'm gonna uh, drop it down to a, a 0.5 all right very cool now uh, before I take a browser preview I'm also gonna insert say modify page properties some margin and uh, margin to the body basically and I'm gonna go out here left margin of 100 to the body and 100 top margin to the body too let's say okay you can see all these six images actually shift people right let's take up br uh, a browser preview now after saving the changes alright 
So uh, the images have actually shrunk more than half their size and have uh, lost their opacity by 50% and the body now has a top margin, left margin. Cool. Right up. Next, uh, I'm going to use the new CSS transitions panel. If you don't have this panel open like I have, you can just go to window and CSS transitions and you'll get this panel. Okay, now let me click on this uh, plus button. Uh, I'm going to target IMG. My target rule will be for the IMG and I want my transition to happen on a hover. I'm going to use these same uh, transitions for all the different properties that I'm going to use. The other option is use a different transition uh, for each different property. I wouldn't want that. Let's keep things sim simple. Okay, as far as the duration is concerned, half a second. I can even specify it in terms of milliseconds, right? I wouldn't want to delay. And as far as the easing is concerned, I'm going to go out, go with the ease out. Basically, means that the animation is going to slow down towards the end, the fag end, right? And let's see uh, which property do I wish to add. Let's start with the opacity. I would want my opacity regaining to one. That's the highest. Okay, the end value I would want it to be a 1. I would also want it to scale, right, to uh, double the size. So I have to use the transform property and the end value will be scale in brackets 2. That means uh, just zoom uh, 2 times, increase in size by 2 times. Let's say create transition and see what exactly have we done so far. And you can very clearly see 6 instances of the image have been affected on a hover all right and uh, we really don't need to know the code that's been inserted a lot of code has been inserted inside the opening and the closing style tags uh, we have uh, out here you can see a lot of vendor prefixes webkit moz ms o for opera moz for mozilla webkit for chrome and safari basically this is to handle the uh, compatibility with older browsers all right so let's have a look up in chrome first Alrighty, you see when I actually hover, uh, how things behave. Alright, but you see, there are times when the overlapping happens, the uh, and uh, because of the opacity, you know, part of it is actually see-through, as you can see very clearly. The Marathon browser is overlapping the Safari browser. We can actually take care of that too. Let me show you how. So, I'm going to go back to CSS Transitions Panel. I'm going to click out here. I'm going to add one more property. It's called Z index, right? And I'm going to ensure that the image that's hovered upon should have the highest Z index. So, so let's say to be absolutely safe, 999, uh, and say save. So a very high Z index, which is going to bring the image in front. Let's save the uh, transition and let's preview it up now. Okay, very cool. So you see the image that's actually hovered upon. Uh, is always in front right so what's actually left for me to do is add the box shadow property now the box shadow property uh, cannot be added uh, through the uh, you know transitions panel I'll show you we don't have any option for box shadow there's none right so which means I need to add it manually okay so what I'm gonna do is uh, you see okay this body code should ideally be right at the top of every other rule. I'm going to push it out here. Then we have a rule for the image and then for the image in the hover. Alright. So, I need to create a rule for the box shadow. I'm going to copy this bit. Alright. I'm going to paste it out here. I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually do that. So, WebKit transform scale. Now, it won't be transform anymore. It'll be box dash shadow. All right. So a little bit of manual uh, uh, coding, people. Just that little bit. Okay. So WebKit is to support uh, the WebKit browsers, Chrome and Safari. I would want an x displacement of two px, a y of two px two. Okay. Uh, then I would want the blurriness and the spread to be four px each. So four px space 4px right and I would want the color to be a hash 555555 that's a dark grayish color alright so 
since the uh, vendor prefix is WebKit, it's going to be supported only in Chrome and Safari. So let's have a look how it actually appears in Chrome. Alrighty. So you see the uh, box shadow property appears very nicely. Alright. Now I need to make sure that it's supported across all the browsers. So I'm going to copy this bit. I'm going to paste it four times. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to add the different vendor prefixes to support all the browsers. That's MOS for Mozilla. Uh, MS for Microsoft Internet Explorer. O for Opera. Right. And a plain box shadow where you don't actually need vendor prefixes. There are some browsers that don't need vendor prefixes, so just box shadow for them. All right, so let's have a look up. Uh, let's this time take a you know look in Safari to see how things look like right now. Okay, very cool. So I would say a pretty cool gallery. Won't you agree? Right, I have uh, a lot many. Um, uh, cool effects that that I can create with the the new CSS transitions panel in Dreamweaver CS6, but I'll keep it for another day, another time. All right, I'm gonna show you uh, rotation along the x-axis and the y-axis in uh, uh, another tutorial, uh, which again will be using the CSS uh, transitions panel. So people, I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, found this information useful I hope you'll comment you'll sub and uh, you'll also keep coming back for more and more tutorials from me won't you you have a good day bye bye peace